Saturday night service. God bless you. On behalf of Pastor and Sister Crystal, we welcome you. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get in prayer. So if you can please close your eyes so we can pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, God, I come before you, Father God, as a vessel. Humble vessel, my God, nothing more, my God. I'm here, Father God, because you're choosing a body so you can interpret your word to your people, my God. It is you. This is your business, my God. And I pray that you would remove me, Father God, and that you would step forth, Father God, and you would take over, my God. I pray you would bless your people, my God, and help their hearts to be sensitive to what it is that you're trying to tell them, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. All right. So if you want to give this a title, we'll go ahead and call it this, okay? We'll call it He is the Vine. Amen? Somebody say that. Somebody say it. He is the vine. Say it. Okay. Amen. So we're awake. Good. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and turn to uh, your Bibles. If you can turn your Bibles to John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Amen? And if you haven't already highlighted those scriptures, I suggest you go ahead and do that tonight. Once again, that's John 15, verses 1 and 2. All right, hear those Bibles? Good deal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read that now. The Word of God reads like this. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Amen? That's heavy. That's a, those are good scriptures right there. Highlight them. I encourage you. Read them and meditate on them. So what I'm going to do is uh, something a little kind of different in a sense. Uh, what I want you to do is use your imagination a little bit. So follow me, please. Imagine that you're standing in the vineyard. Picture this vineyard on a beautiful Sunday morning, and you're able to look around. It's a big vineyard, beautiful vineyard, and you're able to look. You see, you look around. You see all, everything that's taking place within this vineyard. And you stop and look around, right? And you're able to see different independent vines, right? Picture that. Let your mind go there for a second. Picture these vines. It's a beautiful vineyard. You're looking at these independent vines. So the word of God says, right, Jesus is the true vine, and his father is the gardener, right? Who's the gardener? God. Amen. That's right. Remember, you're in this vineyard. You're standing in the middle of this vineyard, and you continue to look around, and you start to examine these vines. You notice that they all say the name Jesus written on them. Why? Because he is the vine, right? Jesus is the vine. Come on, somebody. The word of God says that he is the true vine. He is the source. Jesus is the source. He is our foundation. Come on, somebody. He's our rock. He is our well of life. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. Jesus is our source to the Father. He's the mediator, right? Amen. So as you uh, look at you pay attention to verse 2, right? He says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, right? While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. That's heavy right there. If you've been around and you know what that means, that's heavy. And you know it. Amen? As you continue to look around, right, going back to this vineyard, you can continue to look around this vineyard, you see that the vines all have branches, Right? And some of these branches are really, are really not connected to the vine. But let me just uh, clear that up. What is the branch? Who are the branches? We are the branches. Right? Just so I clear that up so we understand. The gardener is God. The vine is Jesus. Right? And the branches, we are the branches, the people. Right? So what happens sometimes is we become disconnected. And we, we really don't want to be a part of that vine. Right? So as you're looking around, you see that uh, in this vineyard, some of these uh, branches, they're not really connected to the vine, which is Jesus Christ, right? As a matter of fact, it's clear that they have not produced any fruit. Some of these branches have stopped producing fruit. They are dried up, and they're dead. Oh, that's heavy. As Christians, we could, we could become like these branches, that are not no longer producing fruit. We can be spiritually dead, dried up, and fruitless. No longer are we producing the beautiful fruit that we used to. I'm talking to somebody. Amen? 
back to the vineyard, right? You go back to this vineyard and envision this vineyard. It's important that you're paying attention to the vineyard just, you know, for the sake of the sermon, right? As you are standing there in that vineyard, you stop and embrace the beautiful clear sky. That's how much I want you to envision it. I want you to even picture the sky the way it looks. And enjoy that. And you can feel the amazing, the weather is perfect. It's amazing in that vineyard, right? That's how much I want you to envision what's going on. And to your surprise, you notice that there's a gardener there. A gardener appears in that vineyard as you're, you were paying attention to all the details. He begins, you see this gardener, he starts to begin to, to cut off branches. He starts to cut off some branches, right? These branches are not producing fruit. So he's cutting them off. God is cutting off some of these branches, right? God starts, and God begins cutting them off. But remember, God is the gardener and Jesus is the vine. That's very important. That's key. Jesus is the vine. Highlight that. Highlight that in your heart. Highlight that in your mind. Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches, right? The branches are the people. You guys already know that. I already said that. We are the branches, but there are two types of branches, right? Two types. Those that are producing fruit and those that are not. Those that are connected and those that are not. Two different types of fruit, right? Uh, branches. Ask yourself, which one are you? Ask yourself. This is heavy. This is a heavy word of God. And it's, it's a heavy word of God, but nevertheless, it's, uh, God is doing something. And I have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit because this is what God was working with me in. And I'm very careful to share whatever God tells me to share because it's his business and it's not me. Amen? I have to clear that up right now. So the branches that do not have fruit are the people who choose not to get close to Jesus and who choose not to follow his ways. Amen? Free will is given to us. We have that option. We choose to remain in him or not. Bottom line. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want Jesus in your life? How desperate are you for him? You say that you need him. That's okay. It's all great. You say a lot, but... Prove it. What are you doing to stay connected to the vine? Are you doing your part? Jesus is there. He's the vine. What are you doing to stay connected to the vine? Remember, Jesus is the vine. So what, what happens if you decide not to remain in him? You can backslide. You can start tripping in your mind. You can become angry and bitter. You can become ungrateful. You can become that ugly individual that you used to be. Amen? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into uh, verse 6, right? So John 15, verse 6. I'm going to jump into verse 6 now. The word says, if anyone does not remain in me, that's Jesus, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Come on now. That's heavy. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get burned. Right? God says he'll cut you and throw you into the fire. He's talking about hell. Choice is yours, right? Bottom line. If you feel, look at this is important. If you feel like if you're not producing fruit tonight, this should awaken you. It should awaken you. It's a matter not to be taken lightly. This is the real, this is the real right here, right? It's real. Don't let this lead you to discouragement, though, or let, don't let it be, make you feel heavy. Rather, it should illuminate your mind. It should awaken you from your sleep. Some of us are asleep. It's time to wake up. You know, God's not playing. God means business. He loves you. God loves you. That's very important because God is love. God is love, right? It's very important. You've got to remember that. God is love. Very important. Now is the time for us to start bearing fruit. And now is the time for you to fellowship with the vine. Spend time with him. Spend time with him. He's saying, it's been too long. You're not spending enough time with me. I miss you. Come on now. Spend time with Jesus. Get in prayer. It's prayer night. Get in prayer. That's how you spend time with Jesus. Get in prayer. As you pray, this is, this is awesome. I love this. As you pray, he listens. God listens, right, as you pray. But when you read, you listen to him speak to you. 
So it goes hand in hand. You got to read your Bible and you got to pray. That's communication, a relationship. Come on, somebody. Hello, operator. <laughs> the word of God says, now I'm going to jump into uh, John again, but chapter 14, verse 6. And I'm going to read it for the sake of time. Amen. Uh, the word of God says in 14.6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen? Amen. That's right. Jesus, the vine, is the source to the Father. Jesus is the vine. And he is the source to our Father God. And we cannot get to the Father without the vine, which is Christ Jesus, who is the mediator. Amen? Staying connected to the vine will allow you to be reformed. Let God's face shine upon us. We want to we wanna connect with the spirit, with the vine, right, so that people can see what's, doing, what's going on within us because we're spending time with Jesus. We'll glow. We'll have a special uh, uniqueness to us, like a look, right, like uh, a sensitivity to the spirit. Will, it'll attract people. And I'm going to share something because it will attract people, and you want to be sensitive to the spirit, but let's be real. We live in the world. We are not of the world, but we live in this world, right? So, you know, you have the daily responsibilities, whether if you're married or not, you're single or, you know, whatever it may be, you work, you might not be working. Whatever the case may be, we have to live on this earth and what comes along with it. And there's a lot that takes place on a daily basis. So is it easy to stay connected to the vine? Sometimes it's not so easy. It's, it might not be. And that's, that's real. That's real. It might not be so easy, but what you got to do is you got to fight for your salvation. You got to fight for what's right, which is to spend time with the spirit, which is to connect with the vine. Stay connected to the vine. God is saying stay connected to me. He wants you to be connected to him. Yes, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. Stay focused on what's really important. Stay focused on the vine. Stay connected. Stay connected to the vine. This is vital. This is life or death matters right here. Stay connected to the vine. You want to make it? You want to make it? Stay connected. That's heavy. It's heavy. No matter what's going on, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what, what uh, situations are, are occurring, it doesn't matter. You still have to press in and make time with the vine, Jesus. You have to. Otherwise, what are we doing? Bottom line, otherwise, what are we doing? What are we doing if we're not spending time with him? Because that's what it's all about, spending time with Jesus. Jesus is the vine. He is the source. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to take you back to uh, this vineyard, right, this imaginary vineyard, right? As you continue to speculate the actions of the gardener, God, you see that he now starts to prune the branches that have signs of fruit. Some of the branches, some of the people are producing fruit. But now we're getting into the pruning process, which is really heavy. To prune means to rid or clear of anything undesirable. To cut or lop off twigs, branches, or roots. Amen. God starts to cut and remove things in our lives. Amen. He starts to grow us. This process in our life doesn't feel good. In fact, it's quite painful. It really is. Amen. I smile because I know. I'm going through it, but it's all good, man. God is doing something in my life. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is. The pruning hurts, but it's beautiful because you learn to rely and stay, to, you stay connected to the source. You stay connected to the source. Amen? God desires that we produce more fruit. He starts to show us areas in our lives that we need to work on. He starts to show us that we have not arrived. Amen? We have not arrived. We are not the finished, polished product that we thought we were. Come on, somebody. God starts to get deep and cut away. And he starts to sand down some areas within our hearts that need to be cut and pruned. God starts to cut and prune. Ultimately, so that we may produce fruit. Let me elaborate on that a little bit. Amen. God prunes. He starts to, to do a work in us. Because if we stay connected to him, he's going to start to reveal some things. It's heavy, right? The more we stay connected, and this is heavy also because the more we try to stay connected with the Holy Spirit, the more things will try to come and knock you down. Amen? That's, this, this is true. The more you want to spend time with God, the more you try to do what's right, the more things will occur and, and try to knock you down. Things that 
you know that like some areas that you're kind of still a little weak in, maybe should I say, but God is growing you in grace, the enemy will use that tactic against you to try to drop you and knock you down. Why? Because he sees. He sees you trying to take steps forward. He sees those steps trying to go forward, right? And the enemy doesn't like that. He doesn't want you to go forward. He wants you to go backwards or he wants to take you out. That's why it's vital that we stay connected to the vine. The vine is Jesus. He is the vine. Amen? To sum it up, now is, that, now is the time that we are to be reformed. If you can't say amen, say out, right? Reformed. That's heavy. I like that word, though, to be reformed. Come on now. I want to encourage you. If you're in the process of being pruned, it's a good thing, right? It's a great thing, should I say. You know what? God wants to, uh, he wants to prune us so that we don't just produce fruit, but to produce great fruit. God wants greatness from us. He expects greatness from us because he created us, right? He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Come on. So God says, let's see. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to emphasize on the vineyard again. Okay, picture, picture this vineyard, right? Go back to that vineyard. Now you see the gardener and he says to you, the gardener speaks to you and he says, follow me. Follow me. He starts walking deeper into the vineyard and he starts to show you vines that have produced great fruit. And he starts to explain how proud he is of the, of the branches that, are, that produce so much beautiful fruit. And what I like is that he starts to explain to you, like, the process of pruning hurt. It hurt even God to do that, but ultimately it was for you, for, you, for us to grow, to become better. The pruning process hurts, and it hurt our father to do that. And then he stops and shows, like, look at the beautiful fruit, though, from pruning. Right? He, he, he had to do some things, and we're not, we haven't arrived. We will never arrive. But nevertheless, it's a work in progress. He starts to cut some things so that we become better and better and better and more like him. Let me say this. If God is taking the time to mold you, it's for a reason. His ways are not our ways. He has a special plan for your life. But he's working on some areas so that when it's time, you'll be ready. God wants you ready and set up for success. Let God do him and let him lead your life. Stay connected to the vine. The word says in John 15, verse 4, I'm going to read it for the sake of time. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. You must remain in him. Stay connected with them. You can't do it on your own. You can't produce the fruit on your own. It's not going to happen. God makes it clear that we must remain in him. We need to stay connected to the vine. We need to have that personal relationship with him. You and I, we must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's how it works. Spend time with him. Stay in the spirit. And we're all at different places right now. God is doing something within our lives in this season. Stay connected, though. Because it's going to be a journey. Stay connected to the vine. No branch can bear fruit by itself. No person can produce their own fruit. We can't do it. We cannot do it on our own. It's not going to happen. It won't happen. We'll, we will never be the Christians that we have been called to be unless we stay close to the vine. Personally, stay close to the vine. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, stay close to the vine. The vine is Jesus, right? Right? We will not be able to show this world the light of God if we are not spending time with the vine, Jesus. He is the one who makes us different. And it's through him and only through him that we produce good fruit. Ask yourself, ask yourself tonight, am I conducting myself as a, as a good person? Am I producing fruit? Am I acting like a person who is connected to the vine? Your character. If you want to have longevity in your walk with Jesus, you must stay close to the vine 
And even though you will go through a process of being pruned, right, that's a hard process. It's all for the honor and glory of God. It's all for him. If you want to produce fruit, you will need to stay in prayer. That's why we're here in prayer night. Stay in prayer. Stay connected to the vine. Don't be misled by false vines. That's heavy. Don't be misled by false vines. There is only one vine, and his name is Jesus Christ. That job, that's not, that's not the vine. That girl, she's not the vine. <laughs> Amen. That girl's not the vine. Amen. That man, he's not the vine. Amen. Money is not the vine. Whatever it is, you know, that, you know, it's not the vine. You fill in that blank. Only you know what that is. But come on, somebody. Beware of false vines. There is only one true vine, and it's Jesus Christ. God is the head of Jesus, and Jesus is the head of man, right? Stay connected so that you can remain in him, the true vine. We will experience ups and downs. We will go through some things. But if we remain in him, we will get through it. We will get through it. God will provide you with all that you need. He will never leave you without. Now is the time to absorb the mind of Christ like never before. Come on now. You cannot produce fruit without the source, the true vine. Have you been praying? Have you been reading your word? Are you allowing God to speak into your life? When you read, you allow him to speak to you the word of God, when you read the word of God. Praying is good, but you must learn to listen as he speaks to you in his word. Right? What is the fruit of the spirit? The word of God says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23, and I'm going to read that for the sake of time. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Amen? The fruit of the Spirit. Are we producing the fruit that God wants us to produce? I pray that you will apply this word to your daily lifestyle so that you may grow. Let me say that again. I pray that you would apply this word to your daily lifestyle so that you may grow. You cannot produce these fruits if you're not spending time with Jesus, if you're not connected to the vine. You have to stay connected to the vine and remain in him, and he will remain in you. See, pastor is currently teaching on growth, spiritual maturity, right? If we are going to grow, it's going to take us spending quality time with the vine because only he's going to do it. Not just on Sunday mornings, right? You can't just think yeah, Sunday mornings is it. It's not good enough. Some of us, we want to grow. Be aware that if this is your desire, a shaking will take place within your life. It will not be easy, but it's part of the process that you may, so that you may become better. Pruning hurts. It's like when a baby get, goes through the growing pains. It's going to hurt, but eventually it leads to growth, right? We've all heard that. And if you have kids, you obviously know that. We should not have the same goals. We should not be stuck in the same place. It's time to grow. Amen? This season is a season that will require much time with Christ. I'm going to say that again. This season, this season that we're in, is going to require much time with Christ. It is. Because we are going somewhere, but we have to stay connected to the vine. And so that's why God is sharing this word, because he wants to prepare you for what's ahead. It's heavy. It's going to happen. You think the enemy, is he's happy because of what we're doing? We're moving forward. God is doing something. He's not happy. But God is saying, stay connected to me, and it's going to be all right. I got you covered. Oh, God's got us covered. It's a blessing. God is, oh, God's got us covered. There's a, there's a special anointing upon this church. Ever since I, I walked in, like when we were at the, when, at the rec center, ever since I walked in and I connected with Victory Outreach North Hollywood, I felt the anointing, and there was a presence of God that I never felt before. It's heavy. There's a, there's a special, special anointing upon our church, and we are privileged to be a part of it. But God is raising up people who are going to go through some things, 
but we are soldiers and we will fight and we will work together as a team because together as a team, we can make a difference. Amen. We are called to be different. We are called to be different than the world. How can you, how can you show the world that we are different? We can show that we are different by the way we produce fruit. Our character goes back to your character. Does it reflect what the Bible says? Are we walking the walk? Are we living the way Jesus tells us to live in the word of God? If we are going to produce good fruit, it's going to take you saying, I am willing to let the gardener prune me. That means you're letting God work in you, even if it hurts, because it will hurt, because you're going to have to let go of some things that you like, but it's not right. It's time to grow, though. I'm willing to go through that process, amen, because it, it starts with me. I got to take this personal. I apply it right here in my heart. I take it home so that I may show the world that I am a believer of Christ Jesus and that I do follow Christ. He lives in me, and I and. He is the true vine. We are living in a time where the world around us is falling apart. We must, not, we must not fall apart. We need to continually seek Jesus so that he can lead us in the direction that he's, he's leading us in. I like this, right? Check this out. Amen. Stay... Praying for the leaders, right, and the pastor. First, first the pastors and the leaders. Pray for them. But not saying, what are they doing for me? What are the pastors, don't say this to yourself. What are the pastors and leaders doing for me? Don't get into that, that thinking, that stinking thinking. But now what you should really say is, what can I do for them? What can I do to help enlarge the kingdom of God? It's a shift taking place. We've got to start thinking a little bit different. It's time to grow. Amen? But we will only grow if we stay close to the vine. So in closing, I, I leave you with this. The word of God says in John chapter 15, verses 16, right? Verse 16, it says, I'm going to read it. You did not choose me. Jesus said, you didn't choose me. Well, you know, you didn't choose him. But I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. So Jesus chose you. You didn't choose him. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. God chose you. The vine is saying, I chose you, not the other way around. I chose you to go and, and to produce fruit, to bear fruit. I pray you would apply the word of God. I was, I was taught recently, look, at, if, you, if you don't take anything from the sermon, from whatever God was saying, if you didn't learn anything or, or you don't grab something and apply it to your daily life so that you can grow and become mature, then it's for nothing. Take something from this. Take something from this. Whatever it may be, whatever it is, if it's the pruning process, if it's understanding that, that God is the gardener, whatever it is, you need to take something from this because ultimately God wants you to grow. All of us. God wants us to grow, but you need to take something from the sermon. Take something from the word of God so that you can apply it. So you can become a, a more mature Christian and grow. Take another step forward instead of going backwards. You don't want to go backwards. There's nothing back there. You want to go forward. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So what I want to do, right there where you are, matter of fact, if, if you can all stand, please, in reverence to God. Thank you. Right there where you are, if you're tuning in online, watching, here, present. If you feel in your heart that maybe you're not giving it your all. And you want more of God. You want to stay more closer to the vine. Or you feel like maybe you're going back, but you don't want to go back. You want to press in. You want to continue to go forward. You feel that you want to spend more time with God, with the vine, with Jesus, the vine. Right there where you are. Let Jesus touch your heart. Let him impact your heart. Let him illuminate your mind. Let him make a difference within your life. Let him, let, let the transformation take place within your heart. Let Jesus speak to your heart right there where you are. Right there where you are. 
Because if I'm honest, I'm sure some of us have been going through some things. We've been going through some battles, some trials, and, and all that. But it's, it's all right. God is on the throne, and he has overcome everything. He is in control. But right there where you are, if you feel that you want to grow, you want to get closer to God, you want to move forward, right there where you are, just, just pray. Receive what the Holy Spirit is doing within your life. Receive it right now. Receive it. God has a plan and a purpose for your life, and you guys are called. We are all called for the mission at hand, for the task at hand. You must stay connected to the vine. You have to stay connected to the vine. Jesus is giving you a warning right now. He's warning us to stay connected to the vine. He's warning us right now, stay connected to the vine. Some of us are going a little bit to the side and going this way and going that way. Jesus said, no, 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 come back to me, come back to me. Jesus is speaking and he's saying, come back to me. No, 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 come back to the vine, stay close to him. That's why this word was intentional. That's why he spoke, he wanted this word to be thrown out there because he sees what's happening. Jesus sees what's happening. The enemy is trying to do something, but right now Jesus is saying, that's it. It's not going to happen because I'm clarifying this to the church right now so that everybody understands. Stay close to Jesus. Stay close to Jesus. He is the vine. Whatever it is, let it go. Release it unto God and get close to him. Get close to him. If you say, you know what, I've never accepted Jesus in my life. But I want this Jesus you're talking about. I want, I want God in my life. I want to stay connected to this vine. Right there where you are, if you say, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And you, you say that within your heart. Say it in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. Say, I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. And he died and he rose on the third day. Amen. You will be saved. You will be saved. But you have to believe. He will wash your sins away. Say, God, forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for all the things that I've done, Father God, that are not pleasing unto you, my God. Forgive me. Give me another chance at life. Give me another chance. Help me to get it right. Help me to stay close to you. Help me to grow. Help me to move forward. Help me to let go of some things that are, are distracting me from spending time with you, from staying connected to you. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to go ahead and pray out. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now. That your spirit will settle within all the, the hearts of your people, my God, and that you would speak to them. I pray they would take something, Father God, from the word that you shared with them, Father God, for it was your business. It was your word, my God. I pray they would take something, Father God, and apply it to their life, Father God, so that we can grow, Father God, as your people, my God. Even during the pruning process, whatever it is, my God, that you are doing, my God, that you are speaking to people, clarify some things in their hearts and in their minds, my God. Things, Father God, that are intimate with, with you, my God, that only you and they know, my God, that you would speak to them, my God, that you would illuminate their minds, my God. And that you would just clarify some things, Father God. Let them know it is you speaking, my God. And that you have so much in store for them, my God. And that you are calling them to spend more time with you. That you are intentional, my God. And that you are seeking their face. And it's a warning, God. Because if they don't stay connected, if we do not stay connected, Father God, we can go astray, my God. And we can, we can go through some things. We can go away from you, my God. And it's not good, Father God. There's so much out there ready to take us out, my God. But if we stay connected to the vine, if we stay connected to you, my God, we will be protected. We will be safe under a covering, my God. Our families will be blessed, my God. Everything we do, my God, will be covered by you, my God. In the name of Jesus, pierce the hearts of your people and fill them with love, my God. Fill them with love, my God, so they can produce fruit, my God. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you would seal this time, my God. Seal the hearts of your people with love, my God. And, and I pray for the power and the anointing of God to fall like never before, my God. For it is you, my God, who speaks, my God. It is you, my God, who sits on the throne, my God. I thank you, my God. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And that concludes our service. Amen. <laughs>